Welcome one and all to another epic episode of Mac Music Review. In this episode, we're looking at the dark side of the moon, which you gotta get that thumbnail, so like, we're gonna put it like really close. Yeah. Alright, that's a good thumbnail. The dark side of the moon is the most legendary Pink Floyd album, and I'm pretty sure one of the greatest selling, I'm pretty sure at the time it was the greatest selling album of all time, like the most individual album sales, which is really impressive, because the album didn't really have a hit on it, like, um, like, well, I don't know, I don't know if that's true, I, I, I don't, yeah, I'm not an expert on this album, but I'm doing a video on it, nonetheless. And today we're asking the age-old question, is The Dark Side of the Moon a five-star album? First off, I don't, I wouldn't even call The Dark Side of the Moon an album. It's more of an experience than an album. And this album is an experience because it takes you from one place and then you go to this other place. It feels like a journey, especially with songs like On The Run. And it, it really, the album has a flow to it where each song ends exactly where the first song begins. All the songs are extremely interconnected. And this is something that you really don't see in most albums. It's very rare for an artist to do this. Andy Mineo did this with um, his first EP. With I mean, it's like the, um, the Arrow, he did this with the Arrow and King's Kaleidoscope did it with The Beauty Between. But those are both very obscure examples, and it's barely, and, uh, actually, King, uh, Lizard and the Gizzard Wizard did it with Nonagon Infinity, but it's very rare for people to make the songs extremely interconnected and to make them all flow together to make the album a collective, like, experience rather than just a collection of songs, and that is what Pink Floyd did on this album, and they did it in the most fantastic way possible. The production on The Dark Side of the Moon is absolutely immaculate. And what's crazy about this album is that it's extremely varied in terms of the production. You have so many different things going on. Of course, it's Pink Floyd. You're going to have psychedelic influence, specifically on the song uh, Any Color You Like, which is an instrumental track near the end of the album. Also, you have this, this vibe and this theme of insanity that starts on the very first track where you have this manic laughter going in to the second track, Breathe in the Air, where it just abruptly cuts and then you get this really beautiful slow music. And then you have brain damage where it once again in Eclipse, where this theme of insanity really comes to the forefront with the lunatic is on the grass, this lyric at the end of the album which is repeated and then the manic laughter starts to come back up. And um, this album is also insanely epic with these last two tracks just this insanely I'll see you on the dark side of the moon oh, oh and you have these rising vocals and then us and them which is this song which has these lyrics about war and death and killing and then you have this just epic amazing hook and just this huge music the hook is always different it's never the same it's always the song is always changing, but you do have the recurring lyric, us and them. I feel like there's nothing I can really say about the songs Time and Money other than the fact that they're excellent. These songs are classics. Classics. Among the absolute best that Pink Floyd has ever made. The great gig in the sky that is sandwiched between these two legendary songs is also fantastic. This is a heavily gospel-inspired song with, you know, you have this gospel singer lady, and she does all these vocals, and you're just like, ah, ah, just, just dominates this track, and it just feels amazing, it just sounds amazing. On the Run is another fantastic song, and this song really does, this song tells a story without any words. You really do, with just the title of the song and the music, you really do feel like you're on the run. Like you're trying to evade these police officers, but like these space police officers. Because they're coming at you, and you, and there's just one moment. This is an awesome song to listen to in the car because of the surround sound. It sounds like a helicopter is flying over your car. And almost every single time you listen to this car with other people, they'll go like this. What's going on? What's going on? Well, what's happening? That's how amazing. This this album is an experience. This is an album that you feel, that you jump into, that you you don't just listen to it. You experience it, you experience it from front to back. It's an album you absolutely have to listen to in order. 
do not listen to this thing on shuffle. Listen to it from track one to track 10 to get this experience, to really experience the experience the way Pink Floyd wanted you to, the way Pink Floyd intended. Vocally, the album is fantastic. Once again, something you don't see that often in really old music and classic rock and 70s rock is they're getting features. They have this lady do the gospel samples. You have these people doing these background vocals on the end of the album and us and them. And that's really cool. Vocally, this album is awesome. The main guy, of course, is a fantastic singer, brings so much to it. The manic laughter of the old man also adds a ton to this album, to the themes. This is an incredibly deep album lyrically. There's so much to be unpacked, even though some of these songs are instrumental. There's actually several instrumental tracks on this thing. Even so, lyrically, it's extremely dense. Musically, it's absolutely phenomenal. This is an album unlike any other. This is a truly, truly amazing album one of the best albums ever made of all time, and I'm gonna have to say, yes. The Dark Side of the Moon is a five-star album. This thing is a classic. I need to own it on vinyl. That's the next vinyl I need to buy. I don't own any Pink Floyd vinyls. In the next video, we're gonna be looking at the Piper at the Gates of the Dawn, or the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. If it's not the Dawn, it's the Piper at the Gates of Dawn. Which is another insane album. We're gonna be asking the question, is The Piper at the Gates of Dawn a five-star album? So stay tuned to that. If you enjoyed this, uh, definitely stay tuned for that video. Um, or watch it, depending on, you know, when it comes out. Uh, thanks for watching. Have a great rest of your day.